Get out the shotgun or your trusty baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire, because these zombies are flesh and blood. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In today's installment, we're counting down the top five facts about real life zombies. Oh boy, zombie apocalypse. From reanimated corpses to mindless drones serving out the will of others, we're exploring various examples of zombieism in our real world that make the science fiction scenario of a zombie apocalypse uncomfortably plausible. Hey, I do know. Don't you get bit. Number five. The US government has a plan for a zombie apocalypse. Wow, six hours on the dot. Yeah, well, practice makes perfect. They've dismissed it as a simple training exercise, but the US government is in possession of a detailed zombie apocalypse contingency plan. It outlines response strategies to a variety of zombie outbreaks portrayed in popular culture, ranging from the standard pathogenic zombies to extraterrestrial space zombies or magic zombies of occult origins. The plan, titled Con Plan 8888, coordinates multiple branches of the military, the Pentagon, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and more. It all sounds very silly, but with the recent surge in possibly drug-induced face-eating cannibal attacks, it seems prudent of them to be prepared. A naked man he was shot dead on Saturday by police because he was gnawing off another man's face. And how better to keep the public from worrying than dismissing the contingency plan as a joke? When the dead rise, the government is ready. But are you? Some people's epiphany is when they realize that the guy that lives on their block with all the guns and ammo isn't crazy. Number four, BioQuark, bringing zombies to a hospital near you. Somewhere deep underground in a secret facility, evil biotechnicians tinker with the stolen corpses of your loved ones with one sinister goal in mind, to raise an army of the dead. Okay, so they're not mad scientists, and they're based in Philadelphia, but BioQuark Biotech is experimenting with reanimating the dead. And despite the fact that they're doing it with the goal of helping coma patients, curing disabilities, or even reversing degenerative diseases, they've received a lot of criticism, for moral, scientific, and religious reasons. The appropriately titled Reanima Project involves stem cells, spinal fluid transfers, and nerve stimulation applied to brain dead patients. Why are we not funding this? They've been inundated with emails from members of the public begging them to stop before they accidentally set off a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Number three, wasps are already creating zombies. This should guarantee that you'll never complain about a simple wasp sting again. Various species of wasp actually take control of the minds of other insects, turning them into zombie slaves. The Costa Rican parasite wasp injects spiders with a chemical that makes them build a specific web to support and protect the larva's cocoon, with the spider's own body acting as the central support and ultimately a meal. The jewel wasp performs brain surgery with its stinger on cockroaches to make them into lobotomized living incubators for their young. The wasp twists its body around the roach so it can sting into its brain and inject the zombifying mixture. The Galiptopantales wasp lays its young inside a caterpillar and after the larva rip through its skin, the caterpillar is chemically compelled to protect their cocoons until it starves to death. Just be thankful they haven't learned to target humans, yet. Number two, fungal zombieism is especially terrifying. If there's one form of zombieism you should worry about, it's the fungal variety, because from a scientific perspective, it's theoretically possible. Its infected brain directs this ant upwards. You wouldn't start eating brains, but a fungal infection of the brain could take control of your motor system. In the tropical forests of Thailand and the rainforests of Brazil, one terrifying fungus sends spores out into the air which work their way into the bodies of ants. There, the fungus begins to grow, spreading chemicals to the brain which take over the motor system, directing the ant to a suitable place to sprout. Only once the ant reaches this location does the spore finally kill it. It then uses the ant's corpse as a macabre flower pot to restart the cycle. The fungus is so virulent, it can wipe out whole colonies of ants. Number one, there have been cases of voodoo and chemically induced zombieism. Fungus might be the future of zombieism, but zombie human history lies in voodoo. 
Some call it magic, others call it drug-induced slavery. Either way, it's a nightmarish concept. In the early 20th century, U.S. Marines returned from Haiti with horror stories of voodoo practitioners raising the dead. They've been credited with bringing zombie culture to America. So what did they actually see? It's believed that voodoo priests use powerful poisons, like bufotoxin, to make a victim appear dead. The victim would be buried, then the priest would exhume the body and keep the victim in a drug-induced stupor to perform hard labor. This was the case with supposed former zombie Clairvius Narcisse, who in 1980 returned home 18 years after his own funeral, when his master finally died and the controlling substances wore off. Oh, you're chilly. So, are you going to be putting together a zombie survival kit of your own just in case? And do you believe the government's zombie contingency plan was really just an exercise? For more stupor-inducing top 10s and macabre flower pot top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. That sure wasn't much of a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, that sucked.